Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestle News 365. Hope everyone is doing very, very well. As always, there is a ton of WWE news stories to get into today. So let's start off with possible talks between WWE and New Japan Pro Wrestling. Today is such, I mean, like Fridays are always busy when it comes to news stories anyway. Even though it's primarily an AEW focused weekend with Double or Nothing coming on Sunday, there is so much news in the world of WWE right now. Especially with SummerSlam on the horizon, the return to touring, and now possibly, just possibly, a work relationship between WWE and New Japan Pro Wrestling. What is going on? Well, this is a story that's been broken by Dave Meltzer in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, who of course does have very strong ties to New Japan Pro Wrestling and Japanese wrestling in general. So there could be something to this story because WWE and New Japan Pro Wrestling are reportedly having talks about a possible working relationship between the two companies. Now, WWE President and Chief Revenue Officer Nick Khan has been in talks of New Japan Pro Wrestling officials about WWE possibly becoming the official American partner for the Japanese organization. As I mentioned, this is according to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Now, New Japan Pro Wrestling is currently working with AEW and Impact Wrestling and has a working relationship with Ring of Honor and CMLL as well. Now, these talks reportedly date back to late March or early April, and there could be several factors at play regarding a potential deal, but no indication that the talks have advanced. The deal would include WWE sending wrestlers, including top stars, to work in New Japan Pro Wrestling. So, of course, if we hear anything more about this, we'll touch on it. I will be totally honest. When I when I heard this story uh, this morning, uh, and when I was reading a bit more about it before we started recording here, it's not it's not like an eye roller. I just I will see it when I believe it. And there was the the, the report came out previously about WWE and MLW, and I and I don't know how much WWE was involved in that because the reports came out and then WWE very quickly distanced himself from it. There's some kind of discussion, maybe that might have been an MLW kind of deal. They were just working out the final stages of their deal with Vice. And obviously they've got their season premiere, essentially their return to having live fans in attendance. That's in July as well. And the the general consensus might have been that MLW were trying to get a bit of attention there. Nevertheless, you could have looked at it from the other side of it and say that WWE are trying to kind of, WWE are trying to rehab their image when it comes to being able to work with other promotions. Because frankly, and not to turn this into a WWE versus AEW thing, Lord knows we get enough of that on social media, but WWE's image of being able to work with other companies is rubbish. It's terrible. The only time WWE work with other companies is that it's a one-way agreement. They get what they want out of it. And eventually they buy the company. It was like that with Evolve. And it's like it with any company, so especially in Britain that they've worked with. They, they purchase an operating stake in the company. They invest in it. And so eventually they own it. WWE's history of working with companies is not great. Yes, they worked with ECW in the late 1990s, but they were desperate at that period of time because they were getting beaten by WCW. Historically, WWE, they don't play well with others because they're the biggest pro wrestling company in the world and they realize, do we really have to work with other companies? Only if it's on our terms and eventually we purchase you and we purchase all of your talent, it benefits us in the long term. WWE doesn't work well with others. And over the course of the last year or so, AEW's made them look a bit bad about that because within a couple of years of existing, AEW's got working relationships, strong working relationships with the likes of Impact Wrestling, uh, AAA, possibly New Japan Pro Wrestling as well, the NWA too. Especially, I would say, Impact Wrestling have a stronger working relationship with New Japan than AEW do. But we've seen in recent weeks on Dynamite, the uh, IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship being defended on a couple of occasions. That's a that's a, a New Japan Pro Wrestling title, all that kind of stuff. And it's mutually beneficial for both companies. We've seen these relationships with AEW and Impact Wrestling. And we've seen you know AEW stars appear on Impact Wrestling and vice versa. We've seen New Japan Pro Wrestling stars appear on AEW television. And there's a plethora of AEW. AEW talent, high profile AEW talent that have it specifically written into their contracts that they can appear for New Japan Pro Wrestling if they want to. And maybe, maybe WWE just wants to rehab their image of they can work well with other companies. We can work well with other companies. We hear Triple H say it all the time, don't we? Well, we're always open for business. It's always, it's always what Vince McMahon says. We're always open for business. And it's kind of whenever they say that, that's an eye roller because you're not. They're not. They're open for business. And what they mean by that is if it benefits it's us and us only we're open for business and eventually we'll buy you and we'll take your talent i'm not criticizing them for it 
I'm not criticizing them for it. It's 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 business at the end of the day, and that's what's benefited WWE in the past. I just would be stunned. I would be stunned, and I would love to be proved wrong. I would love to be proved wrong, but there does seem to be a mixed reaction to this on social media this morning. You would think that the news of a possible working relationship between WWE and New Japan, people would be like, yeah, that's great. And I think fans specifically of WWE go, yeah, that's great. But fans of New Japan aren't really happy about this. I don't think they want to be involved or in bed with WWE. I think there's a concern from New Japan Pro Wrestling fans that it will lead to these New Japan Pro Wrestling talents just going to WWE and not coming back. There's lots of concerns, and especially considering the development of New Japan over the course of the last 10 or 15 years without WWE, people are saying that our fans of New Japan... <sighs> Do we really want to have them involved with WWE? From a New Japan point of view, I can understand it because they might be thinking, look, we want to expand in the United States. We're trying to mix success, not great success so far. Maybe we do need to partner with WWE to really increase our foothold in, in the United States. I don't know. And vice versa, WWE wants to improve their footing in Japan. They've got Japanese offices. We've known for a while they wanted to do NXT Japan. Uh, and for for whatever reason, they haven't been able to pull that off. So maybe a working relationship might be mutually beneficial for both companies. I don't know. Uh, like I said before, I'll just I'll believe it when I see it. I will believe it when I see it. And WWE's track record, and again, this is this is not just their track record of working with companies, but working for specifically with even Japanese talent is not great. It's not great. You're trying to tell me that you could get a, a an Okada, a NATO, whoever. And they could come over to WWE and have a and work a couple of matches, or be over in the United States for three or four months and work an angle, or be involved in a big show. You really think Vince McMahon would promote that? And I'm not saying that because you know Vince McMahon at the end of the day money talks, but look how he's booked people like Shinsuke Nakamura. That he looks at him and says, "Well, he's a great talent, but his English isn't great, or he's got too strong of an accent." And Nakamura's got his glass ceiling. Nakamura just did an interview the other day talking about how he's still struggling to adapt and settle in the United States, specifically the WWE style, and he doesn't talk to Vince McMahon that much. I mean, would Vince McMahon really go for that? And I know people like Asuka, you could say, well, Asuka has success on the main roster. Well, she just cuts entertaining promos in Japanese, but realistically, she carried the Raw Women's Div Division for a year, and what's, what's it done for her now? Nothing. Nothing. She just uh, uh, ran some raves like a clown on Monday Night Raw. And if I'm if I'm a New Japan Pro Wrestling talent, and if I'm if I'm either I'm Asian or I'm Japanese or whatever, I'm looking at it going, would I really want to go over and work for that company, even if I'm still a New Japan Pro Wrestling contracted talent? Now, obviously, there are other names in that company that I'm sure WWE and Vincent Mann and Triple H want. One being Jay White. There's been lots of discussion. That's who they want, and maybe a Will Ospreay as well. I don't know. Again, I'll just I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe it when I see Roman Reigns in the Tokyo Dome against Okada at Wrestle Kingdom. And if, look, if that happens, clip it. I'm more than happy to be proved wrong. More than happy to be proved wrong. I just don't know. I don't know. Obviously, Dave Meltzer, uh, Dave Meltzer reporting it does make it slightly credible. And the fact that Nick Khan, I suppose, has been part of these negotiations. I've said it a couple of times already this week, but I've been saying it the last couple of weeks that the, the name Nick Khan, we are going to hear more and more and more of. His power is obviously growing because we hear him in all of these stories and his his edicts are different to Vince McMahon. Now, Vince McMahon, I would assume, still do, and he does, still has the, the majority voting power and the buck stops at Vince McMahon. But Nick Khan, this is a guy that's obviously trying to stamp his influence on the company, trying to make his mark on the company. He's merged departments. He's overseeing international offices. He's now negotiating with New Japan. He's hiring different kind of announcers for Raw. He's certainly putting his stamp on the company. Whether or not it works, whether or not it will happen, time will only tell. Again, I'll believe it when I see it. I'll believe it when I see it when it comes to that. Now, I mentioned SummerSlam is on the horizon. There was a lot of discussion yesterday talking about SummerSlam and about uh, the date, specifically when we could expect to see SummerSlam, what uh, day, what location. There's been lots about it. Well, we do have finally some confirmation about SummerSlam. And interestingly, SummerSlam is going to be taking place on a Saturday for the first time in its history. Now, this was widely reported yesterday, but it's just been confirmed by WWE in the last couple of minutes or so because WWE today announced that SummerSlam 2021 will take place on Saturday, August 21 from a summer destination location. They have not mentioned which location this will be. The venue will be revealed during the 2021 Belmont Stakes pre-race show on NBC next Saturday, June 5th. 
Now, tickets for SummerSlam will go on sale Friday, June 18. The event will stream live exclusively on Peacock in the United States and on the WWE Network everywhere else. So this had, this had been, as I mentioned, widely reported that SummerSlam was going to be taking place on a Saturday for the first time ever. It was reported first by Andrew Zarian of the Mat Men podcast. WrestleVotes also tweeted this. As far as uh, the actual the location uh, that is going to be revealed next weekend, it's been previously reported that... Uh, I, I can never say this. I can say Ali Giant, Ali Giant Stadium in Las Vegas, Nevada, looked to be the venue for SummerSlam, and that that's pretty much looking to be confirmed very, very soon. Uh, the interesting part of this is the clashes that it's going to have. We'll touch on this though in a second, but. It's, as I mentioned, it's believed that that stadium in Vegas uh, will be confirmed very soon. WWE has wanted an outdoor stadium setting for the biggest event of the summer. And while Ali Giant does not have an, a retractable roof, it does allow for an outdoor setting with a special roof and doors. It's the home of the National Football League's uh, Vegas Raiders and has a capacity of 65,000 fans for NFL games and 61,000 for soccer games. But it can be expanded to up to 72,000 people. Now, as I mentioned, it is going to have some significant competition that night because there's a big big boxing fight on the same night which is very strange but we'll have to wait and see as i mentioned it looks like the the vegas uh, is going to be the destination it could change it could change it was reported yesterday by the sports business journal uh, that there were other venues under consideration the hard rock stadium in miami sofi stadium in uh, los angeles uh, nrg stadium in houston metlife stadium in new jersey and nissan stadium in nashville tennessee and obviously the stadium in vegas SummerSlam 2021 will mark the first time that wwe has held the big summer pay-per-view in a stadium in the united states of course SummerSlam 1992 was held at Wembley Stadium over here in London in England in the United Kingdom so uh, obviously uh, huge news huge news I think for most people being on a Saturday I think most people like it I think most people like it certainly eight people over here in the United Kingdom love the idea because it doesn't ruin them for the Monday for work uh, I think a lot of people in the United States will because it allows them to carry on with their weekend and they can stay up as late as they want. They can enjoy it. And if the whole idea of this is that it's going to be a tourist destination and all this kind of stuff, well, doing it on the Saturday does make it certainly more of a tourist spectacle for them because they can fly in on the Friday, they can do it on the Saturday, and then they can relax on the Sunday. And there's other things they can do on the Sunday. So I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I know that traditionally WWE has always been the Sunday pay-per-view model. And look, AEW have shifted from a Saturday pay-per-view model to a Sunday pay-per-view model. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. But it, it's big news. And WWE, obviously, even before the announcement of returning to touring, this was going to be SummerSlam initially was going to be the big date to kick things off. Plans have changed. But the plan that hasn't changed is that WWE really want to do something big for SummerSlam. They want to essentially do what they really couldn't do for WrestleMania this year. Obviously, they did it in the stadium, Raymond James Stadium, with fans in attendance, and limited fans in attendance. But I think... They want to do what they couldn't do for WrestleMania for SummerSlam this year. They want to do it in a stadium. They want to have a significant number of fans in there. How many that is, I don't know. Um, I know that there's some, and again, I'm not, I'm not totally familiar on this. So you can let me know. But there's some like motor car racing, uh, maybe this weekend or or, or has recently happened. That was the biggest number, so like sporting crowd since uh, the pandemic. I don't think WWE is going to beat that for SummerSlam, but they want to have this ginormous crowd and this big celebration of uh, not only fans being back because fans will have been back for a while at that point but they want to do something big and something significant so it's exciting and with a stadium show with a stadium show with a Saturday event you know that uh, and strong competition we're going to have some big names that show up on that show and we're going to have some big matches so it's very exciting and look, as I mentioned I'm all for a Saturday event I'm all for a Saturday event so it doesn't bother me in the slightest speaking of big names showing up John Cena John Cena has been rumoured for SummerSlam for a while now and it looks like he's nearly confirmed Confirmed, and he could be reportedly set for a huge main event level match at SummerSlam 2021. Now, the 16-time WWE World Heavyweight Champion has been noted as returning to WWE in the near future, with many speculating that his comeback to WWE will coincide with a return to touring and a live audience in July. He's been speculated for that first SmackDown in front of a live audience. Now, Andrew Zarian, as I mentioned of the Matman podcast, who has just been, I mean, talk about on fire at the moment. He's obviously got a source that is just bang on because he is just, every single story is being spot on. So you've got to give him major credit. He is now strongly hinted 
that John Cena will be involved in the main event picture at SummerSlam in August. Now, he did not mention John Cena by name, but he did say, quote, what you can't see, you can't believe, seemingly in reference to Cena's famous signature catchphrase of you can't see me. He would also say SummerSlam is a very big show. I know the main event. I think it's a very big main event, especially by today's WWE standards. It's a match that we haven't seen happen too often. I consider this a pretty big main event. Now, there's been no hint in regards to who Cena's opponent could be, but one would assume that it's going to be maybe possibly a title opportunity for John Cena at the biggest party of the summer. So it could maybe be John Cena versus Roman Reigns for the Universal Championship or John Cena versus Bobby Lashley for the WWE Championship because, of course, that's a massive main event with huge stakes because if John Cena wins that match, he breaks Ric Flair's record, <laughs> but he breaks the record in terms of becoming a 17-time WWE World Heavyweight Champion. That's massive. That's huge stakes. That is ginormous. Roman Reigns versus John Cena alone is ginormous. It's a shame we've seen it before because they did it at uh, No Mercy in 2017. And that's a shame because I think a lot of people at the time didn't really, and myself included, didn't really understand why they did that at the time. Because why would you do that then? Because everyone was saying that is a WrestleMania main event match. First time ever, John Cena, Roman Reigns, just a sheer clash of generations. The previous generation's main event franchise player in John Cena. My generation certainly is Hulk Hogan versus the current generation's Hulk Hogan in Roman Reigns. Again, the two franchise players of their respective generations, the two leaders of the company, the two faces of WWE for their respective generations clashing off. You would think for the first time ever, that's a massive, massive match. It's a massive moment. And the promos that they did, the shoot promos, the work shoot promos that they did with that contract signing on Raw between Cena and Reigns and Kurt Angle in the ring. Amazing. And what pay-per-view did they do it for? No mercy. No mercy. Why? I don't know. There was reports at the time that Vince McMahon wanted to rush it because he knew that Cena might not be around and he wanted to get Roman Reigns ready for WrestleMania to face Brock Lesnar. Roman Reigns lost to Brock Lesnar that following WrestleMania. None of this ever makes sense in the mind of Vince McMahon. But look, we've seen both of those matches before. We have, not that often, which is true. We've seen them before. Though. Obviously, as I mentioned, Reigns versus Cena, No Mercy 2017. Uh, Bobby Lashley versus John Cena. We did see Great American Bash 2007 for the WWE Championship, which John Cena retained in a very good main event. And Bobby Lashley, ironically, was gone from WWE not long afterwards. And he'd been feuding with Vince McMahon. He'd been the ECW champion. He was involved in the Battle of the Billionaires that year. And then he was gone by the end of it. Just craziness in the world of pro wrestling at the time. And then, of course, wouldn't return until uh, a 11 years later, 2018, the night after uh, WrestleMania 34. So we could see both. To be honest, the bigger match, obviously, is Cena versus Reigns. And I think, look, everyone's putting Reigns over so far, whether it's Daniel Bryan, Edge. And I don't think John Cena would be any different. And, uh, you know, I don't think John Cena should probably win the 17th World Championship. I've said that I still think Roman Reigns should be the Universal Champion until WrestleMania 38. I think that's the best way to do it. I think that's going to be possibly... It's going to be in uh, AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. You could possibly, depending on vaccination situations at that point, you could maybe get 100,000 fans in that building. And uh, to see 100,000 fans, see Roman Reigns drop the championship to whoever, that's a big deal. That's a very big deal. So um, I hope it's Cena versus Reigns because that's ginormous inside of a stadium coming out of this pandemic. That's incredible with the stakes of Cena possibly breaking the record. That is a money, that is a money pay-per-view. That is pay-per-views that could do that, that, that's, that's something that could really may, not maybe break records. We have to think of the situation that we're in, but certainly in terms of signups to Peacock, the WWE Network, ratings, all that kind of stuff, it's big. It, it's very, very big. So uh, I'm excited. I'm very excited to see that. But I did mention this issue with SummerSlam and the Saturday date because uh, obviously they've just announced that it's going to be on Saturday the 21st of uh, August, possibly going to be at Ali Giant Stadium in Las Vegas. Uh, but this might be a slight issue because uh, WWE, the issue is, is that we could see a possible clash with Manny Pacquiao because um, it wouldn't be the, big, the biggest show in town that weekend because Manny Pacquiao and Errol Spence Jr. is set to fight uh, on Las, in Las Vegas on the very same night on uh, Saturday the 21st of August. Hmm, that is a bit of a problem. And I'm surprised because the rumor was basically, the rumor was that SummerSlam was going to be on August 22nd in Vegas. 
And then people said, uh, the, the report essentially goes that uh, WWE were kind of blindsided by this Pacquiao announcement that the, the, the night before there was going to be this big Pacquiao fight in Vegas against Errol Spence Jr. And they were like, hmm, maybe we move the pay-per-view to you know, the following Sunday or a couple of Sundays prior or something like that. The fact now that they've actually moved the date back one day and it's on the same night as Manny Pacquiao versus Errol Spence Jr. is very odd to me, really odd to me. Basically, this is what I spoke about before. I mentioned this on social media, and this is the only kind of rationale I can think about this is that maybe WWE thinks, look, there'll be a lot of people in town for that Manny Pacquiao fight. And however many is going to be in that arena, I don't know, you know 14, 15,000. But if we, if there's enough people in town and we can kind of turn Vegas that week or that weekend or whatever into just this smorgasbord of people, there's people there to see the fight, there's people there to watch SummerSlam. If we can just get all of these people in Vegas during that period, we can capture that audience. And maybe those people that are in town for the Pacquiao fight or they fly in for the Manny Pacquiao, uh, Manny Pacquiao fight festivities, but they can't get tickets to the to the to the fight. They can come to SummerSlam or something like that. That's the only thing I can kind of think of that people they they're kind of piggybacking the fight in the sense of well they'll be in town for this, but they could come to our event as well. That's the only thing I can think of because it it seems such a risky strategy. Now the boxing fans and 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 pro wrestling fans overlap. I think so. I think so. So it's going to be interesting. And it's it's bold. It's very bold of WWE to say, you know what? We'll force them. We'll force them to choose Manny Pacquiao or WWE. And look, only time will tell to see what happens coming out of it. If 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 attendances aren't good or all this kind of stuff, then People will say, see, you shouldn't have gone up with the Manny Pacquiao fight. But if they do well, they'll pat themselves on the back, go see. WWE can still outdraw a Manny Pacquiao fight and all that kind of stuff. So we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see on that one. It's fascinating that they decided that they would rather, instead of following it the following night, they would rather compete with it and do it on the same night. I mean, what would be best or worst? I mean, I suppose if you had to follow it, there's no guarantee that the people that were there the prior night are going to be there. The one thing you could say, though, is that you know guaranteed that, you know, you're not competing with anyone. It's difficult. It's very difficult. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. But it's fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Now, speaking of WWE's tour, uh, a huge amount of tour dates have been announced by WWE. The next 21 WWE live event uh, dates have been announced. So uh, we'll have to go through all of these. But... Uh, they're mostly super shows. They're mostly super shows. So we're not doing Raw SmackDown tours or anything like that. So uh, July 24th, there's a super show in Pittsburgh. There's uh, one the following night in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, July 31st, there's a super show in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. August 1st, there's a super show in Little Caesars Arena in Detroit. Uh, then you've got August 2nd, you've got Monday Night Raw from the Allstate Arena in Chicago, Illinois. August 6th, you've got uh, a SmackDown from Tampa, Florida in the Amelie Arena. Uh, August 7th, you've got a super show in Hertz Arena in Fort Myers, Florida. August 8th, you've got a super show in Stephen O'Connell Center in Gainesville, Florida. Uh, August 9th, you've got Monday Night Raw back in the Amway Center in Orlando, Florida. August 13th, you've got SmackDown in Tulsa, Oklahoma. August 14th, you've got a super show in the Spectrum Center in Charlotte, North Carolina. August 15th, a super show in Columbia, South Carolina. August 16th, Monday Night Raw in the AT&T Center in San Antonio, Texas. August 20th, you've got uh, Smackdown. Smackdown in the Phoenix Suns Arena in Phoenix, Arizona. August 21, obviously you've got SummerSlam. The location is going to be revealed. It's going to probably be Vegas, though. August 22, the following night. So the night after SummerSlam, we've got a super show in uh, Ball Arena in Denver, Colorado. August 23, you've got Monday Night Raw in San Diego, California. August 27, in the Simmons Bank Arena in North Little Rock, Arkansas. August 30, you've got Monday Night Raw from the Chesapeake Energy Arena in Oklahoma City. Or, uh, September 3rd, you've got SmackDown. Smackdown in Jacksonville, Florida. September 6th, you've got uh, Raw from Miami. So it looks to be, looks to be, to be honest. I mean, I mentioned before about what the schedule was looking like before. It's looking like now we're, we're almost going back, to be honest. We're almost going back to what they were like before, which is crazy, really. You're looking at five dates on. Five days on, two days off. It's going back to essentially what it was before, which seems just... I'm really surprised by that. I'm really surprised and maybe things will change depending on the situation. I still think the pandemic situation is still fluid. I still think it's very fluid. And um, But, you know, look, they're, they're going to five days on. I've said before that I think the, the live event um, 
mechanism for WWE is outdated anyway. Prior to the pandemic, I think it would. I think the idea of running five live events in a row, even in the modern era before the pandemic, was just outdated. It's unnecessary. It's taxing on the talent. And um, WWE were having issues with their live events way before the pandemic, way before the pandemic talking about how it was difficult to draw now and they were looking to scale back live events because they weren't as financially viable. You know, AEW have proved this at this point that you don't need live events to be profitable anymore. The money comes in television rights and merchandise agreements and all that kind of stuff. Live events aren't the money maker they once were. And WWE were realizing this prior to the pandemic. They realized this because they were they were changing things in their live events and Vince McMahon spoke openly about scaling them back or reevaluating how they were going to do them and all that kind of stuff and <laughs> the pandemic hits they don't do live events for 18 months and they come back what do they do five days on two days off go right back to before but we're not doing raw and smackdown ones we're just doing super super shows that was the way that's the way you're going to draw is just just do super shows it just feels odd doesn't it it just feels very very odd and like i said maybe that's optimistic this is a 25 date tour maybe they'll announce new tours afterwards i don't know but it just I'm surprised that they've gone back to that model. Maybe this is the litmus test to see if they can still draw in that model. I, if they were struggling to do it prior to the pandemic, why would they be able to do it after the pandemic? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I think it's very surprising though. Very surprising. Uh, speaking of surprising, Brock Lesnar and WWE, because Paul Heyman has dropped a hint on Brock Lesnar's possible return to WWE television uh, once WWE resumes touring for live events in July. Now, during a recent appearance on Sports Talk 790 in Houston, Texas, Heyman was asked about Lesnar's return. This is what Heyman had to say, quote, asking me about Brock Lesnar is a highly intelligent question and I commend you on your efforts. However, it's a hypothetical. Brock Lesnar does what Brock Lesnar wants to do. If Brock Lesnar wanted to be back in WWE at this moment, at this particular time and place, he would be. Maybe, maybe he had been waiting for the live events and maybe he'll choose Houston to make that return or maybe not because Brock Lesnar is going to do whatever Brock Lesnar wants to do. So whilst he has hinted, uh, there, Paul Heyman, that Brock Lesnar could return at a moment's notice. Who doesn't know that? Brock Lesnar could return at a moment's notice. I think, uh, well, I don't just think, I, I know, because WWE, this is, <laughs> if you look at the facts of all of these, you know, things over the course of the last, uh, however many years, was it eight, nine years that Lesnar's been back under that WWE umbrella? Uh, <laughs> He'll, he'll be back. Everyone knows he'll be back. Everyone knows that eventually he'll sign a new deal with WWE. The issue is Brock Lesnar is very, very, very expensive. And he's not financially viable when you don't have fans in attendance and when you don't have huge amounts of money rolling in for live events, for pay-per-views, for televisions, whatever. He is financially viable when you're running stadium shows, when you're having shows in Saudi Arabia, when you're getting astronomical fees to do your shows. So now that fans are coming back, now that fans are filling the arenas once again, Brock Lesnar suddenly becomes a financially viable asset and a big asset to WWE because they know Brock Lesnar puts behinds in seats in terms of ticket sales. And if Brock Lesnar wants to come back now, then he certainly could. And I'm sure WWE would make him a very compelling offer to return, especially knowing they have to fill a stadium in August for SummerSlam on Saturday in competition against the Manny Pacquiao fight. Who do you call up? You call up Brock Lesnar to get tickets, uh, to make sure he gets tickets sold. Simple as. So I expect Brock Lesnar to return this summer. Uh, if he doesn't, then who knows what could happen. But I would be stunned if we don't see Brock Lesnar inside of a WWE ring or at least back on WWE television uh, by the end of the year. It feels inevitable at this point. Uh, finally, let's talk about Eva Marie because there's some update when it comes to the plans uh, for Eva Marie on Monday Night Raw. Now, WWE reportedly has plans for Eva Marie to help get another female talent over on the red brand. As has been noted, WWE started airing the new Evolution vignettes for Eva Marie to return to Raw several weeks ago. While Eva has been training at the Performance Center as of late, the language in the vignettes has led to speculation that Eva Marie may be acting as some sort of manager on Monday Night Raw. Now, in an update, Fightful Select, which of course is their patreon service be sure to check that out and subscribe they do fantastic work and they've been doing a lot of it recently they have reported that the working plan is not for eva marie to wrestle on raw but for her to be a vehicle to help get another female superstar over now there's no word yet on who that talent will be so i think that makes sense um, I don't think many people want to see Eve Marie wrestle. That's not to say that she won't. I'm sure she will have matches and I'm sure there'll be attractions when, look, I mean, if she's going to help get a talent over as a manager, who's to say they won't become the women's tag team champions? Those bouts are pretty redundant anyway. So who's to say that that won't happen? I would be surprised if it didn't, frankly. 
what talent that will be and help him get, o- get over, I have no idea. Uh, it concerns me we haven't seen Io Shirai for a long time because they might call her up and then have Eva Marie as our manager. But look, I mean, I mentioned it before about Shinsuke Nakamura, and I guess this kind of comes full circle on this video here, is that if... WWE or Vince McMahon has a problem with accents and people not speaking English well, which he does, then maybe he'll look at it and say, well, give her a mouthpiece. At least we know that Eva Marie, um, he likes her. He likes Eva Marie. I wonder why, but he likes her. So uh, maybe that might be the case. I don't know. But my thing with with Eva Marie has been that if they're trying to position her as a baby face, it's dead in the water already, especially with the return of live fans coming soon. I just don't see a scenario where she gets cheered unless I guess she's with Io Shirai. But there will be a backlash if she's if she's with Io Shirai, there'll be such a massive backlash of people going, why? <laughs> why? That's such a terrible idea. I mean, I'm kind of sorry for putting it out there in the universe right now. So look, only time will tell. But looks like Eva Marie is going to be a manager on Monday Night Raw. But look, guys, as always, um, thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, coming into this uh, this stream, this video, because there is so much news story going on at the moment. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I'll do my best to respond and reply to all of your comments. Really enjoy interacting with you guys, talking about WWE, AEW, Impact Wrestling, New Japan Pro Wrestling, all things pro wrestling here on the channel. So be sure to get involved in the community. Drop a comment below. All opinions are welcome. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on the like button too. Really does help us out here on YouTube. Go out the rankings, get into people's recommendation feeds if they haven't seen our videos previously. But most importantly, if you haven't already, please do subscribe to Wrestling News 365. You can do that by clicking the bottom right corner of the screen right now. Or if you wait a few seconds, there'll be a subscribe button at the end of this video along with another video for you to watch. Thank you very much for watching, listening, streaming, or have you come across this video today. And I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.